How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trailmakers Creations. Guess what? I built some things. You want to see them? Okay, let's look. I'll show you. First thing, baby dragon. Just a little dragon. She's got a, a floppy tail. So this is a really simple build. Again, I was trying to make the smallest walker I could. So uh, trying to keep it as simple as possible. All it is basically is just some hinges and some servos. Again, with our wiggle timing or back and forth timing, we can jump in. Spacebar, he tries to flap his wings. Number one. Number one, spacebar are the only controls on this thing. Seat steering, if it steers at all. So number one starts his walk cycle. Do, 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 do. Now when he's walking, we can hit space bar. He tries to fly, but he's just a baby dragon. He can't fly yet. He's got a couple thrusters in there just to make him move a little bit at the pace that his legs are actually moving at. But that's a good way to start a super simple quad walker. Four servos, some hinges for the knees, some suspension for the feet, and then all you got to do is basically just set your timing, and you got yourself a walker. He tries to fly, he tries to fly. I haven't tried putting wing pieces on there. I wonder. So if I just put a wing, a wing piece in here, will he actually get any lift? Let's see if that gives it any, if he actually gets any lift when he flaps his wings. A little bit, his back legs come off the ground a little bit. So it walks good. No, can't fly yet, buddy. Can't fly yet. Nope. Oh well. Maybe we'll make like different stages of from this dragon up to a little bit bigger and then up to a little bit bigger and then up to a full grown dragon where he can actually fly. That'd be kind of cool. See if that's a doable thing. All right, next we're gonna be taking a look at another viewer challenge. Someone wanted me to build a spy car that was to scale with the character. Okay, good challenge. So let's see what I got. So this looks like about scale to the character, eh? This is the character scale spy car. So that's about as to scale as I could make it. Got two seats, right and left. Got some headlights, chrome bumpers, of course. Using the normal wheels. The chrome in the back, a couple, a little bit of exhaust here with our mini thrusters. Let's get in the driver's side here. Does about 130, I believe. Yeah, 125. So it's not too bad for speed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She's a little squirrely on the handling. I would actually probably put uh, spike tires on it if you want better traction in the dirt anyways. So, because it's a spy car, it wouldn't be a spy car if it didn't have some kind of special features. I did try to make it aquatic so that I could just drive onto the water and it would float like an act like a boat. And unfortunately, I thought about that way after starting to build it. I was just about done the build. So I uh, didn't have enough room to actually put in those internal components to actually make it float. So the only things that it does do, well, only, oh, it, it runs into walls. Look at that. See? Okay. Repair. So number one. Gives us our pop-up guns out of the hood here. Bang, bang, bang. It's for shooting the bad guys. Pow. So that's number one. Pops those guns up there. And then, of course, the ultimate getaway, right? Even if you're just sitting still like this. Number two. Space bar gives you some extra control, a little bit of extra thrust, and you are flying away. Got to have a flying spy car. Again, this just uses some gimbals, but it's balanced pretty well that you can just hit number two. That turns that on and off. You can fly down against the gimbals. Number two, turn that off. Come up over a big barrier like this. Number two, we are out of here. 
Or, like you just saw, you can take off straight from the ground. That's probably actually one of my favorite things about it, is the fact that you can just hit number two and it just slowly lifts off the ground and is gone. Let's see if we can come down here. Land it on the hillside. Oh, no, I'm not going to make it on the hillside. Oh, 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 loosen some pieces. Big bounces, big bounces. Come on, down to the ground, down to the ground, and off. Nice. So that number two can also be used if you do pull a really sharp Yui. Number two will actually upright you. That's what I like. Let's drive along and then pop. And over to Snow Island. Shoot some guns. Pop out. Pop out. Yeah, so the next version I think I'll make of this is going to be uh, aquatic as well. It'll either be... It likes to be able to make a boat that rides on the surface as well as a sub. But again, having to use the sub seat to achieve those underwater characteristics kind of sucks because uh, it's not very conducive to making a scale size vehicle. So I hope that meets the criteria for that challenge. That's pretty scale size, don't you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the character scale spy car. Alright, let's head out to the carrier. I'm going to show you something new I built using the hover pads. So this is the puffin. Like the bird, you know, the little squat looking bird. That's kind of what it reminded me of. Just because it's got that flat face looking. Little rounded body, almost like a flat penguin. So what the Puffin uses for propulsion is two sideways hover pads, except these don't have any hinges or anything pushing anything into the hover pad, which is what a UFO engine normally has, and a UFO engine normally only works or works best when it's horizontal. As soon as you start getting at weird angles, the power reduces. If you turn sideways, it almost completely turns off altogether. So what I found was, in the experiments with this, here, we'll just jump in and have a quick look here. As soon as I jump in, the hover pads are on, So I'm not pushing nothing right now, just WASD controls. You can see I've got four servos on there, helicopter engines, that are constantly spinning, connected to a that uh, that sensor in the back there. So that that's giving you more rigidity as far as stability. I can turn like this and I'll stop. There's no it reduces a lot of the drift, keeps you stable as well. So we can fly like this, and all I'm using for propulsion is those two sideways hover pads. And because I have the bell, diving bell on there as well, like I said, it's the puffin. But actually, the those engines work underwater as well, which is also a bonus. So if you don't want to use propellers underwater, you can use sideways engines like this. Now, like I said, this doesn't use any hinges or anything to actually get that propulsion. So let's go up here to the yeah, landing this thing. is up. Oh, yeah, that's how you land it. You just you crash into a wall. And then, and then you're all landed. But I'll show you how simple this actually is. So we'll grab a couple hover pads. Put them back to back. Like this. And then, we're going to grab one of these here, 2 by 4s We're going to put it on the back side. Just like this. On the back side. Now all we need is a couple of 2 by 2 sloped, like this. We turn those so the slope is on the inside, like that. Just like that. Not like this. Like that. So now, as you can see, all I need to do is put a seat on there. Let's put, like, say, this one here. So it's level with the ground here, so it sits flat. Now, look, I'm going to build that into the world and just jump into it. And away we go. No need for for hinges, no need for having angles, see like this even, normally this is how they would normally work, doesn't have any effect whatsoever, rebuild it this way, and I've got absolutely nothing keeping me up in the air as far as lift, let's go back here, jump out, jump out, jump out, you yeah, see the hover pads won't, won't work when you're not in it, so, alright, so, if you wanted a wee bit of lift on this, what I would do, even if you put a couple of stabilizers like this 
on the front. And like a slope piece on the front like this. Bango Django. Maybe we'll copy a set out like this and move them back. Put them up like this. Like that. And let's see what that does. See if we've got enough seat control. And we can keep ourselves in the air. Now see it wants to push down. I wish they could be smaller. It'd be so much easier to make like missiles and torpedoes because they work in the water. So you can make torpedoes with those as well. So if if you wanted to see, I would just do this. Watch this. Instant control. Take a couple of these little hinges here. And we just put it there on the back of the seat. Green is up. So we'll make that S and W for down. 0 0.1 you want small increments of movement and I'm even going to go like 10 degrees as the angle. We'll build that in like this and oh so close all right all right just about I think we've got it we just need to face upwards more see just like this and the nice thing with these sideways engines now is it's less complexity because there's no hinges a little bit less weight and they work in all directions so even when you're flying downwards or upwards or you're banking to the side you still get the same propulsion from those hover engines those hover pads because it's not relying on the orientation compared to the world yeah screw them oh oh and with just one like this you can fall to the ground real gracefully like yeah yeah let's let's not do that so as long as you've got some minor control surfaces and your aerodynamics again play a big part in moving these things you can make yourself a nice quiet jet and again go ahead and experiment with uh you know take these this double set a double set of hover pads like that and uh you know try putting them four of them on the corners like a quadcopter except it's, instead of helicopter engines or propellers use the sideways hover pads maybe make them rotate different orientation see if you can get it to move yourself around almost like a plasma thruster of some kind but I wanted to share that with you guys the new sideways version that I found like that actually works really well I know the update may have messed with uh, some of the other UFO engine builds and the shapes of the pieces that you have to use in order to get it to work so this is a new fix for that so that's all I got for you today guys thanks for tuning in thanks for watching hope everyone's doing well stay healthy if you like what you see here, check out this, some of this content on the end screen here. And we will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.